Are you ready to go through a walkthrough with me of how to actually manage your client's social media, especially when you're a virtual assistant? If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Lian Lai. I run a virtual assistant agency here in the Philippines named 2XU and I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now in the last couple of videos, I have been giving you guys more of a walkthrough on how to do some of the more basic virtual assistant tasks, such as the inbox management and calendar management. And in this video, I wanna walk you through what the social media side of that looks like. Now, before I dive into the actual walkthrough, I wanna make sure that you guys understand what it means if your client gives you the task or the project of managing their social media. Depending on your client, it could range from you actually planning out what content comes out. It could also mean that you are just scheduling the content or you're just doing engagement or you're just doing analytics or a mix of all of them. Uh, and the more common mix is that you know those four things. So you can be the one fully in charge of the results for social media. Now, why do clients need you to manage the social media? Well, first one is awareness, of course. So then other people will know about their brand or about their business. The second is to get leads in. So a lead is a person who is interested in your client's business of doing business with them, whether that's purchasing the product or purchasing the service. So depending on what kind of product or service that your client is selling basically and as well to stay relevant because nowadays whenever we're about to explore a new restaurant or cafe or check out a new product we want to buy we check out their social media if they're still active so it's a way to keep having customers know that hey we're still running a business here we're still alive and another way of course to keep the customers up to date on what would be the latest things that they may be selling or offering in their business now first off is i want to walk you guys through through creating the brand kit. So when it comes to creating a brand kit, so I just have Canva open on here. I use Canva for everything inside of 2XU. Uh, so here we have our brand guide or brand kit. Now what it is, is basically agreed upon scheme of how you wanna show up for your client's customers or client's clients. So for example, for Twixu, we have our brand colors on here. These are the ones that we use in a lot of different graphics that we have. We have our brand logo. We have the different variations on here as well as a white if we were going to use it for a dark background. And we have our typography, like what would be their, our header font and what's our worksheet paragraph font. So then as different people maybe are creating different graphics or things for 2XU, everything is uniform depending on our brand kit or brand guide. That way we're not all over the place and it's going to be easier for people to recognize like, oh, this is from 2XU. Like if someone else shares our posts, oh, this is from 2XU. It gives that clarity and it gives that recognition of like, oh, this is what it is. Same thing as all of your favorite brands, they have a brand kit that they follow, whether that's their logo, their colors, what they put into their font. So it's really important that you get acquainted or you get to know really well what your client's brand kit is, or if they don't have one, you probably have to create it. Again, it's super straightforward and simple, can just look like this. The next thing is you wanna start building up your content pillars for your client. Now I have taught this in a lot of other videos before, but your content pillar is kind of, think of it as kind of a wheel of fortune for creating content on what are the things that you do want to talk about for your client's social media. So for example, in 2XU, we're either creating content in how to work with a virtual assistant, how to delegate to a virtual assistant, or it also could be how to build up the operation side of the business because that's part of our core offering. So depending again on the client that you have, what they're working on, what they're doing, you want to create just a pillar of content of if all else fails, you know that this is the content you want to talk about. Now, if you are a loss on what those content pillars could be, you could go to websites like Answer the Public by Neil Patel. I really love this because then for me, I could go into actually right there and search virtual assistant. I want to target people in United Kingdom, for example. And of course, I want it to be English and I'll just click basically search on that. And it'll basically load up what are people usually looking for when it comes to the keyword that your client might be focusing on for their content. So let's say that your client sells Notion templates, then it might be you know, search notion templates or notion on here but it gives you this list of what are the top searches 
what are the top questions people usually ask about the certain topic you might be honing in on. And just like that, I basically now have lists and lists and lists of content that I can create within 2XU. Most of this we already have created, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys what that actually would look like and how you can pick the topics basically or the content pillars for your client. Now the next thing you wanna create is your content calendar. So for 2XU, this is what our actual content calendar is. So you guys are very much seeing the behind the scenes. So this is for our October content calendar. And you guys will see, we have basically created what I'm calling the content machine. So what a content machine is, it's basically having a big long form content. So this could be a video, podcast, or a blog. Since I create a lot of these videos, it is mostly from the video form. And then it is turned into to short videos. So if you guys are subscribed to 2XU social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, you guys would have seen that we turn all of these videos that I create into short form videos that we then post everywhere else. And then we create a carousel post, which is basically multiple pictures breaking down what was talked about in the video. And then it's turned into some sort of graphic post relating to it, still having people to go back to the video. And lastly, it becomes into a content that we can repost, we can turn into another blog post basically, so on and so forth, and this cycle continues. So that's what I call a content machine. So going back to our content calendar, when it comes to create a content calendar for your client, again, it will depend on the kind of content you're creating and what platform. We definitely just started with LinkedIn before. It is in the last two years that we've focused a lot on posting in other platforms. But basically, this is what it looks like for us. So it basically starts with a blog post. For So for the YouTube video that I posted about two months ago, it'll be turned into a blog post that will be shared on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. You guys will see the different platforms we have on there. Uh, we have hiring posts, for example, but then that blog turns into a quote that's posted everywhere else. We have promos for the webinars that we do every single month into XU and then we have like highlights for a company we have video share for the Thursday videos that I do for 2XU and then we just have you know ongoing other things so this is built inside of Notion you don't have to use Notion although if you guys do feel free to sign up with my affiliate link theanline.com slash Notion but my point is you don't have to make this super complicated it has to be just a way for you to be able to track what needs to be posted and when and for us we even have status points we have created scheduled posted and and if it's already been approved. So I'll show you guys a little, again, a little bit more behind the scenes. Um, and here you'll see how we've set this up inside of Notion so it's easy for everyone else within the marketing team to see who's supposed to be doing what and where the status of different things are. So here we have EA tasks. So this is one of the, the uh, posts that we do um, on Wednesdays. So we have EA tasks, LinkedIn management, we have the caption on here. We have the supporting image or video that goes into Canva so we know um, whoever's going to be scheduling this later on, they know where to grab it and it's going to be easy for them to edit if there's anything that was missed or needs to be changed. So that's how simple your content calendar can be. It doesn't have to be this big thing. Again, we started with you know one post a day and now we've evolved into this. But for us, the point of the content calendar is you know what to post and when to post it. So this is already scheduled out essentially throughout the whole month. And then we always, we even have it all the way to the end of the year, just because again, we want to have that preparedness of knowing what to post and when to post it. Next is you want to go ahead and start then content batching. As you have your brand kit, you have your content pillars, you have your content calendar, start creating batches of content, at least two to forever weeks in your client's business. We have even executive assistants who have their content batched eight months ahead just because it's just good to have it all in order. So you don't have to keep thinking about creating the post for the next day, the post for the next week. You know it's already taken care of. It also gives you the freedom to later on be flexible, to change posts without feeling the pressure that, oh crap, I'm gonna have to do this. Content matching is just basically just now creating the content that you've set up to create and taking the time again to keep stretching that throughout the next couple of weeks. So again, you don't have to get stressed out of too much buy it. Again, in 2XU, we try to have it even just a month ahead or two. That's currently target that we're working on right now. And because I do create a ton of content, it does make it a little bit easier. So depending on your client, it might be that you're creating the content from scratch. You might be looking for topics or things to talk about. For some of our clients who have a very active social media where people share posts about their experiences, it's a little bit easier for them to create batches and batches of content. So depending on the kind of business that your client might have, it might be really hard or really easy to create that big book 
of content ahead. The next thing that you want to do is to go ahead and start looking at the social media analytics for your client. Now, what this means is depending on the tool that you're using, for example, for us at 2XU, we use Buffer as our scheduling tool, so things are scheduled ahead. It also offers us a lot of analytics on what goes on basically throughout the week, which posts have done well, which posts we probably need to improve or do better on, and it gives us the data to know which posts we might have to you know, redo or which posts we want to boost and actually work on and creating more of that. So this is why looking at your social media analytics for your client is really important because it can give you the data of what it is that you need to be pushing more in the content side of your client's business. Basically, what is working with your client's target audience. Doing social media analytics just basically means that you are looking back on past engagement rates, basically, for the different posts to create across platforms. Of course, Facebook has its own like analytics you can use. LinkedIn also has one, YouTube has one. So again, depending on your client and what platform you guys are using, you might wanna make sure that you look at that. So you can give your clients basically an actual report of how well your content creation is doing. So then they know that, hey, th this is worth doing. This is something I wanna keep doing in my business. So here is an example of social media analytics that you might wanna create for your clients. So for us in 2XU, we are tracking the engagement across platforms. There's a cool little graph on here. And we also are tracking the number of followers that we're getting every single week. Now on Buffer, the tool that we're using, it also shows us which posts have gotten the most engagement or which posts maybe aren't worth doing again. Next is doing social media engagement. Now, as much as I want to actually walk you guys through what that looks like, it will look differently depending on your client. So what engagement is, is making sure that you answer questions comments or chats that show up in your client's social media. Now, this could be, again, just a message that they sent on Instagram, making sure that you create engagement there. It's making sure you respond to comments because that will basically tell the algorithm, the social media platform that, hey, this content is worth looking at and will push it more to more and more people. A really good way to think about social media engagement is when you post on your Facebook, it is first shown to people who are most likely to engage, to kind of gauge and see if this post is worth boosting. So let's say that you shared something about your life and 10 people liked it immediately because your family and friends are the first one they usually show it to. Then Facebook, Instagram says, okay, let's put this into a wider audience. Let's see if more and more people will want to do this or use this. So then more and more your friends will see it and the more engagement, the comments, the likes, the reactions basically that people leave, the more likely it is that your social media platform will keep boosting it. And that is how you create a viral piece of content. The more people who share it, the more people who comment on it. And this is why it's really important that you engage with them in the comments as well. It could be that you added a call to action or like comment below, you know, X, Y, and Z, or like make sure you tag a friend below. This is creating that momentum, that engagement, so people will wanna keep coming back. And it's also really important that you connect with with your clients customers or their clients as well so then they feel that they want to come back that they want to keep engagement that they want to keep going back for your content sharing it because they get rewarded by being validated by the person who actually posted it so this is why it's really important that you go back you check comments you answer questions so it brings people you know keeps them coming back into the page into the post which of course creates more engagement. And lastly, the main thing that you wanna make sure that you're doing if you're managing your client's social media is going ahead and just planning ahead. It's going out and seeing what are the events that are coming up, if your client is in Australia or in the UK or in the US, what are holidays that are coming up that you can create content about? What are the things that your client might be launching soon? Might be creating a launch sequence. And of course, of course, you can use tools like ChatGPT to start creating drafts of your content. Note I said draft of your content. If you just need to have a brainstorm on what kind of content posts you can create. And I do have a lot of videos on how to do that with ChatGPT. And essentially, again, your purpose for this is either a awareness to bring in leads for your client or to keep people coming back because they know that the business is still alive. Now, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below. Have you ever managed anyone else's social media? I would love to know your best practices as well. And if you still haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home, which you guys can check out those two playlists right here and the latest video right here. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And remember that small steps matters. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.